Maria out on the front lines again, this time in La Jolla, Texas, an area where she encountered migrants who were actually trying to be captured. You yeah. see people coming over, you apprehend them, and yeah. then what? Well, we gotta, we gotta have them somewhere, somewhere safe, and obviously in the brush, it's not safe. There, there's snakes, there's spiders, there's animals there. But here, it's, it's open, it's wide open. We can see what's going on, they can see what's going on. So we'll have people just sitting along the fence out here, usually two, three hundred at a time. Why do they come here? What, why is this sort of a porous area, a, a weak area in terms of the border? Whether it's weak or not, that, that's kind of besides the point, since these people are turning themselves in. You know, they're not really concerned about getting caught. They're actually trying to get caught. And the interesting part is it's not just people from, from uh, Central America that are coming. We see a lot of uh, Romanians come through this, this part also. So it's, it's not just something that's just uh, designated to the, the Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. In fact, we're rolling up right now on a group of, uh, of people that were just apprehended. Um, Let's stop, I'd love to see it. This is a, a small group of, of people that just crossed the border right now and they just gave themselves up. Um, and we'll stop right here. They're giving themselves up because they know that they'll be able to stay in the country. Yes, what they know is that by crossing the border illegally and giving themselves up and claiming asylum, they're going to get released into the United States. What's going on? Tell me the process now. So what the agents have to do now is the agents have to uh, search them, make sure that they don't have anything that's dangerous, any weapons or anything like that. Um, what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll take and they'll, they'll bag everything that they have, all their possessions, they'll tag all their possessions. Um, this process right here takes an awful lot of time. And as you can see, as we've discussed, you can see that these Border Patrol agents now, they're taken off the, the, they're taken off the line, they're taken out of the field. They're no longer patrolling the border and that's what the cartels do. Brandon, there's a big group right behind us. What's going on? Who are they? Uh, this is a group of illegal aliens that just crossed the border right now. They're headed towards what we call the Temporary Processing Facility or TOPS. Um, they know that uh, upon arriving at TOPS they're going to be processed and then most likely they're going to be released into the United States. This is the catch and release. This is what is driving so many people to cross the border illegally. Joining me now with his reaction to what we are seeing at the border, Pennsylvania Congressman on Foreign Affairs and Transportation and Infrastructure Committees, Scott Perry, and here also all morning long, Tom Bevan and James Freeman. Congressman, your reaction to Maria's reporting from the last several days? Well, good morning, Dagan. If this was on a concert T-shirt, it would be the Biden Damage and Destruction Tour Hashtag Biden border crisis. I mean, America has been uh, uh, witness to a dizzying display of failures and uh, and broken promises in the first hundred days of this administration, which uh, which lead them to see policies that are more divisive make America unsafe. And uh, uh, you know, it should say uh, Biden hashtag, hashtag Biden uh, border crisis is what the T-shirt would say. I mean. Not only are they seeing these policies, but this is a train that's on the fast track to financial ruin for the United States of America. That, that's where we are, uh, the catch and release policies. I mean, I, Dagan, I represent South Central Pennsylvania. So the little town of Carlisle, which houses the U.S. Army War College, there's more unaccompanied minors in custody right now that, than in that whole town. The largest county that I'm honored to represent, Dauphin County, which is the seat of Pennsylvania's government, has Harrisburg in it. In the last month and a half, more illegal foreign nationals have come into the country than in that county. That's, that's staggering. And when people hear that, they absolutely know for sure that that has an impact on our country, has an impact on our safety and security, have a, has an impact on our economic viability. And none of them are good. Tom Bevan, jump in. Congressman, uh, I'm, I'm interested in the dynamic in Congress. There's been talk, obviously, of immigration reform and being broken up into bits. Is there anything, is there any appetite, any possibility that anything can get done in Congress, past both houses of Congress, that could alleviate the problem in any way? Tom, I think what's important to understand up front is that the Biden administration doesn't see this as a crisis. Um, when you say that they want to alleviate this, what they're going to look to alleviate, and I would have Americans watch out for this, is the efficiency at which they move people from the border into the interior of the country. Make, make sure you understand that they want these people to come. This is happening because they want it to come, and that's evidenced by the fact that President Biden, on his first day in office, 
uh, rescinded the, the agreement with Mexico that these folks stay in Mexico and seek asylum from there as opposed to coming into America and then disappearing into America. That is the plan of the Biden administration. So they have no interest in solving the situation where people are coming to the border. You got the vice president supposed to be the border czar, and instead of going to the you know the southern border, this is happening. First of all, it took her days, almost a month, to get to a border, but then she goes to the northern border. She's going to the border of other countries, not to the to the United States Mexico border where the crisis is occurring. So, just just keep that in mind. They have no interest in solving this in the sense that you want to see it solved. James Freeman, do you have a question for the congressman? Sure, thanks, sir. Congressman, uh, your uh, your concert T-shirt sounds sick. I think I'm going to stick with my ACDC tank top for the moment. But my question you to you is about uh, transportation. Uh, Dagan was talking earlier about how only five percent of the money in the so-called infrastructure plan from Team Biden goes to roads and bridges. But as we know, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who is not a car guy, says some of that money is going to go to actually dismantle. Roads uh, and and other infrastructure that that uh, they don't like. Do you have a sense of how much of that money is actually going to build stuff we need in terms of critical bridges? Well, I would give them a little credit. I think it's a it's a little more than five percent. My figures show it's about nine percent. Uh, but uh, keep this in mind as Just well. Just roads and bridges, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, roads and bridges, uh, things that are infrastructure, yeah, highways, airports, those type of things, almost 9%. So uh, yeah, it's a good college try looking at 91% being for other things. And those other things are actually to discourage the use of your personal vehicle, especially if you use gasoline or diesel to power that. The, the, the left in this country is completely disinterested in you having the mobility that comes from your own personal vehicle. They want you on a train, they want you on transit, they want you off the roads. But if you are gonna be on the roads, they want you to use an electric powered vehicle that's plugged into a grid that does not have the capacity to charge that vehicle. That's where they're headed and they're gonna force you into that situation based on the policies that they wish to pass, not only in the infrastructure package, but in the Green New Deal. Well, there's a bill that's been introduced and an idea that was actually backed by Vice President Kamala Harris to ban gasoline-powered automobiles by 2035. So they can go a lot further. Uh, meantime, Maria... Dagan, I think you just made my point. Yeah, Maria spoke to former President Trump on this program yesterday yeah. about his future in politics. Well, here's what he said. Are you thinking about running again, Mr. President, in 2024? Yes, 100 percent. And the polls show it, and everybody wants me to do it. Uh, well, 100 percent, I'm thinking about running, and we will, I think, be very successful. If we were very successful. Congressman, your reaction? Well, I, I, listen, I, I don't think anybody should be surprised, but I think that the way maybe to measure this right now is to talk to uh, and look at the actions of the enemies of the United States of America. Look at the actions of China, of Russia, of Iran. Uh, they see a weak Biden administration. As you know, weakness is provocative, whether it's Russia massing uh, troops at the border mm -hmm. of Ukraine, whether it's Iran trying to, you know, uh, extort us yet for more untold billions and hundreds of billions of dollars to get back into the JCPOA, uh, uh, only to reach nuclear capacity from a weapons and delivery standpoint, or whether it's a, a, a you know, a, an arrived China uh, uh, posturing against uh, uh, Taiwan or the United States, I, I think that uh, those enemies of the United States are very much interested in getting as much done as they can in these four years because they understand a President Trump uh, would be coming and they don't like what he brings to the table. They, they, you know, that's, that's something they don't want to see and have worked against entirely the whole time. Congressman Scott Perry, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Be you safe. as well.